WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We are positively taking the Maryland Crab Cake Tour back out on the road. We're so excited about that. It is our 25th anniversary this year here at WNST, our 32nd, going into our 32nd year now, me being on the radio here every day. Big appreciation, our friends at the Maryland Lottery, for another year. More fun, more giveaways if you're out in the White Marsh area. No longer in Highland Town, so we're going to tell Andy's story, uh, as well as my buddy Mike Shoe's going to come out from WJZ, big Ravens fan. Uh, we're going to eat some hot dogs the right way with Andy, uh, and we're going to uh, also celebrate the fact that our friends at Window Nation are supporting the Maryland Crab Cake Tour this year. 866-90-NATION if you need windows. They took care of me. Great job. It's 27 degrees this morning. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little chilly, but I'm not frozen the way I used to be. Big appreciation, my friends at Window Nation. Uh, five years, 0% financing on that. You buy two, you get two free. It is an absolute wonderful thing. And, and good people that support what we do here, including this guy. And uh, Justin Tucker, I hope he's got the proper caffeine that he's going to need from his Royal Farms uh, and the coal roofing mug. We welcome Bill Cole back onto the program, our uh, defending champion, um, I was going to use the word consigliere this week, and then I saw it was like completely mafia related, and then I thought, nah, I'm just going to keep that for me and Bill at this point. I'm not going to let, <laughs> I'm not going to use that for anybody else. How are you, man? A happy Festivus, right? I mean, like, uh, that's so funny you said that. I, I wanted to know whether we retired that word. Like, do we not use that word anymore? Because I haven't really heard it, and because last week was such a train wreck, you know, into the finish of the season. I don't even think that there's like this opportunity for an exciting build up to the playoffs. It's more like a we're limping in and uh Well Harbaugh looks morbid, right? I mean the as whole we go thing into is this this mess. week. Ugh. Like he and I had a, a little back and forth a couple of weeks ago on a text where I indicated that Mike Tomlin has more integrity than anybody in his building and he didn't like that. Uh, mm -hmm. and that's okay because I've now been denied a credential this week, just so you know, just on the record, because you are the consigliere here. Um, I, I I did apply. I've been denied. I had a I have a flight. I have I have a seat on a flight. I was telling the story the other day. I had Solomon Wilcox on because he's in Cincinnati. I'm like, dude, all I can picture is the Bengals PR giving me a pass, me going out there, them losing 41 to 14 or something hideous happening, and me eating a bowl of chili at an all night chili joint at about 2:21 AM in the morning after leaving the stadium, killing time before my 5:40 AM flight back on Monday morning um, to get back home that I was this, I had it all figured out that if they just credentialed me, I could have this whole Kerouac tale about the Ravens season ending. But dude, I can't find anybody and you can bet on this bad, bad, bad. You can get $200 free. You, you could have broken the bank last week, signing up for all these things, just betting against the Ravens. I, I, it really is amazing that nobody believes the team can win, right? Like that they really do. If they were to win, it would shock the world for everybody here who formerly would believe almost anything in re regard to the Ravens, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, is Lamar playing? Does Lamar want to play? Do the Ravens want Lamar to play? I know we wanted a linebacker because we managed to do that deal, and you know there goes some <laughs> there goes some of the quarterback money, right? Like we know what we know what pays the bills around this part of town, so I, it's really. I mean, it doesn't help when you have what is a virtual preseason game the week before the playoffs, not because you're sitting there in first place with a bye, but because you're surrendering decisions were made and champion conference champions were anointed. And, you know, it was just such a mess. Like, and, I, you know, and everybody I in Cincinnati is still pissed off, by the way, the hey, point flip thing, like all that, right. They had it's no all... chance to be the one, all of that. <laughs> yeah. It's such a mess. It's such, and you know, it's just, I don't know. It, it really speaks to the institutionalness. Is that a word? But yeah, like we expect the NFL season, like we just did COVID. We just did a totally Lousy, crazy, right. yeah, we just did a totally crazy period of time where the NFL was messed up and, and college basketball went away. You know, like we went through all that, but here we are again, just on the back end of that. And one thing happens and the whole set of dominoes goes falling down and 
I, pretty much everyone is annoyed with the outcome that the NFL came up with. There's no one that says, oh, that was that was perfect. How you get like the championship game in Nashville? How's that going to go? Just, right. <laughs> it's so bizarre. I, you know, I, I don't know, man. Like somebody said, there has never been a time in J.K. Dobbins' career where him, Lamar, and Gus Edwards were ever in the backfield all at the same time. Like it's been impossible for the three of them to be on the field at the same time. And it's like, yeah, okay. That, I mean, that really does sum up kind of like the last two, three years. And I don't think football is very fun when there are more discussions about the quarterback's contract and health and his, you know, knuckleheadness or his lack of knucklehead, you know, like, like that's not, that's not really what we're tuning in for. That isn't really what the juices get going. Like we want them to go out and we want them to like make amazing plays and do things that we've never seen before. And but he can't come out right on now the because of his name, right? I guess, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's very bizarre. It's very anticlimactic. Yeah. Like I'm, me and everyone else are tuning in Sunday night to watch for about an hour before the outcome is known and I can go to bed because, I'm, you know, I got to work the next day. Just so, so we're clear, you just called it bizarre. So when I call it bizarre, it has nothing to do with Chad Steele or, you know, this is bizarre. Yeah, I mean, I, like, I mean, I've been a purple flamingo on the lawn guy from the beginning and all of that. And I, I have no idea how this is going to work out on Sunday night. Right. Like, I really don't. And. I'm going to talk to people all week. Lamar's going to play. He's not going to play. He's going to play. How well will he play? Even if he can play, How, who's he throwing the ball to Sammy Watkins? Like I, like, right. has he met him yet again? The second time around, I don't <laughs> yeah, like, he met him long enough for the dude to fall. Guys are catching <laughs> Charlie Kohler. I mean, you know what I mean? Like it, I for know. me, I, I, I have very low expectations, right? So they've lowered the bar which in so many ways is uh, been my experience over the last 10 years. Now that we're up on the 10 year anniversary of the last ride of the mile high miracle this week, right? Uh, 10 year anniversary of that next week, it'll be beating Tom Brady and uh, you know, Harbaugh grabbing Flacco and pointing to him up in Gillette stadium and us all having a celebration to this, whatever this is, right? I I don't, I don't know what it is, but I know whenever they lose, Whenever they lose, and like this week, they get to go play Patrick Mahomes next week. I'm wearing red and right. white, so uh, for Coons Ford, um, they're not yeah. going to win the Super Bowl. And then they have a situation. One situation right. they eliminated, which they're, dude, these are savvy people. This is yeah, not the it. Angelos family, right? I get it. They I got it. they got Roquan Smith done because they're like, we're not. He's not C.J. Mosley to them. Right. And that, you know what I mean? Like C.J. was banged up. Right. Right. I saw C.J. still making plays and missing a couple of plays last week. But I like C.J. Mosley more than they did. Right. right. And and they sure. like Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey more than I do. Right. <laughs> right. So um, they and definitely we, like Sammy Watkins more than I do. <laughs> and we equally love Calais Campbell. Right. right. You know what sure. I mean? So sure. Sure. Uh, but I, I would say for them. All of the talking you and I do and me and Dennis do and me and Luke do and everybody, you and your buddies and the guys on roofs and, and doing solar, Gordy and all, all the talking, we'll do it accelerant this week and out at the zoo with Kirby this week and doing good things in the community and all networking and all that. Everywhere I'll go, it'll be, what do you think? What do you think? I'll have a purple tie on this week for you, Billy. Right. Um, yeah. They speak in two ways. They speak on draft weekend. And then they speak when they give money to a player. That's really – oh, and the coaches speak when they draw the plays up and put you in on third down and say, you're first string, you're second string, you're third string. And they speak when on third and eight they back shoulder to you, Anquan. They speak on the field, right? And then they speak with – as a franchise, they speak with their money and their draft picks. And Roquan Smith is is a perfect example. This – From a leadership standpoint, right? You run a company. You speak with money, insurance, love, attaboys, trophies on the wall. I don't, you know, we all get we all get compensated in the way we are. But for the way we judge them and the monopoly money they play with, right? Like literally, sure. um, 
that we give them through PSLs, media money, all that stuff that we do, buying tickets, buying swag, all of that, that they decided Roquan Smith was a must-have at the highest level, paying him at a level that they wouldn't even let him think about going and playing somewhere else. Right. They overpaid him by its very nature. They right. ev- Every guy they've ever signed, they have they pay the most for. Otherwise, the guy would be playing in Miami and getting a tax break, right? This opens the door for all of your, well, that's less money for Lamar. They've got $50 million budgeted for a quarterback, right? I mean, right? They, yeah, I there are outcomes that keep him here. I think just to go back to the the game for a second, um, the only hope I can find is that football remains this the what I believe is like the only sport where there actually is work that can be done Monday to Friday, you know, where you can break down the other team find a weakness, find a matchup, change up what you're doing and actually create better outcomes, right? Now, five in, plays to go after that cornerback. Here are right. the five plays. We're going to put this one in on second and long when we're, in, you know, and down into that. All of that is so much more measured than maybe the guy in the upper deck drinking his third beer realizes. Well, I think, right. And I mean, that was where my brain went to on, on Monday night for the, the, college football championship was like Jim um, John Harbaugh has to be sitting around looking at his coaching staff saying, why didn't we do any of that against TCU? Like Georgia in a short week, not only were they probably a superior athletic football team to TCU, but they also did all that work to figure out how to take advantage of the things that TCU did. So and I think that's more likely in the college game than in the pro game. And at the end, like the the pro game will the better players will make plays. But you know, weird stuff happens too. The ball is not round, so it it bounces in weird ways. Uh, so there Joe are, Burrow turns an ankle in the first quarter. Everything yeah, changes, I mean, right? They're, like they're, it's right. just There's, that's the way the outcomes. league. Yes. That's the way the games played. You know. Sure. So the fact that they're here and playing. Like that right. needs to be celebrated, but it will not be the minute this is over with, this will yeah, be not good true. enough. And Lamar, 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 and then Lamar's holding cards. And I, 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 I can go up and down the river this week as to whether he should play or shouldn't play that. He's not even in salary, right? Like he's been paid his whole salary because they get paid in season, not out of season. Right. right? right. So, all of this conjecture about his ankle and how Harbaugh has portrayed this at the podium has left speculation because this has not been a transparent process, right? Like right. in any way, it feels very, very behind the curtain. All of this is felt. And if he comes out and plays like Lamar Sunday night and they win 28 to 24 somehow, even more so, but his value no longer to them, no longer needs to be portrayed in any other way other than what they've been with him and what they've been without him and what they would look like without him because we've seen them for almost a season now what they look like without him, right? Yeah, I I don't know. I mean, shame on him for putting himself into this position, but if he wants max contract, he needs to go out and play this weekend and he needs to look like an MVP. Spoken and then, like a real CEO that says, you, you know, you want to work for Cole Roofing, you got to do roofs, you know, like it's what we do. You but know? It's, not, right? it's not even just us. I mean, how many people now are where well, they were, oh my gosh, I wonder if there's a chance we could talk to the Ravens about Lamar. Ah, no way. They're going to keep him. I don't know. Like all those teams, if it was a dozen teams who were sitting there wondering if there was a chance they could talk to him, half of those teams have gone like, thank God we didn't do that because the dude can't stay on the field. And it appears that he's kind of a, like, he's not able to manage the business side to get that out of the way so that they can just focus on football. So now if he doesn't play this weekend, it's just question marks. It's just things that erode value. Whether they're big question marks or little question marks, they erode value. Well, the Ravens right? do not want to do anything 
to piss on him and erode his value and say he's been jaking it, he's been dogging it, he's been sure. doing it. They, they will never do it because they want to get three number ones for him. Right. <laughs> right? I, I mean, they, they sure. need to go get three number ones for him in February and have the Dolphins fall in love with him or the owner, literally the owner, fall in love with the concept of Lamar and selling tickets and bye-bye Tom Brady and, hey, by the way, um, you know, Lamar, $250 million and we sold 10,000 season tickets the minute you walked in. It's just it's it's monopoly money, dude. It's I know. Steve Bishotti, I... since the last time we got together last week, Steve Bishotti got six hundred million dollars from you and me, from all of us. Last time we built the stadium with three hundred million and they ask every one of us for a couple of grand for PSL money toward it. Right now we just. Give the money away. There's no PSLs. Any, just do whatever you want with the money. They're going to blow up the um the the press box. Believe it or not, and I know you find that hard to believe, but they're going to. Yeah, but well, they're no, going to. There's gonna nobody put, in there anyway, right? They're going to put right. That. They've kicked. They, they they're going to. Yeah, they'll have their employees watch the game on television. Right. Um, call it the auxiliary. Um, second stage is what they'll call it. So, the he gets six hundred million dollars. He only paid five seventy five for the team. So yeah. the, the the state of Maryland has rebated him the entire purchase price of the franchise in stadium goodwill over the next 15 years just for keeping the team here. They've rebated him his entire investment that's now worth $5 billion. Dude, it is good cooking when you can kick the media out, never have to have a press conference, never have to talk to anybody. And at the end of the day, this too shall pass with Lamar Jackson. He's yeah. just a guy for him, but, right? Yeah, he's, but, just, he's just a player, I'm right? I mean, he doesn't even moment. take this guy to like Terps games and hang out with him courtside like he did the previous generation, you know? I'm I'm deathly afraid of like the Stony Case era. Like, hey, I hear you, brother. Like, that's what's coming. Like, losing it, sucks. Yeah. Well, and even if you manage to win 12 to six, right? 12 to nine, like, like it just is a horrible way to watch football and I would rather. Okay. So we know that their desire to remain competitive, competitive is not that high on the priority list. Like there are other things that are higher priority, but I think if you just accept the fact that you're going to franchise him for two years and at that time begin building another football team for the time without Lamar. Like if my All job Lamar has to do at $48 million is walk into their office and say, I'm not playing. Deal me quietly. I have no agent. I have no, by the way, I've talked a lot this week. I had Chris Pike on, right? I had Solomon Wilcox on in Cincinnati. I'm going to have Dave Lapham and, uh, and some other people on. And your C level, by the way, uh, Bill Cole is here. Uh, Cole Roofing and Gordy and Energy. Tell me what you do real quick, so I can um, uh, go, go to my C level conversation <laughs> on this. Commercial roofing and solar, but it's like exciting. we don't really have playoffs, and I, I mean, we go through free agent experiences, <laughs> I guess, but, you know. <laughs> but we spend a lot of time. Uh, trying to help everybody understand and help everybody realize that it, you know, it's 150 families and that we're all supporting one another and uh, you got to be fair and you got to, you know, you got to, you have to celebrate the guys that, that are really your rock stars that are showing up every day and you have to make an example out of them because that makes those other guys want to do that. So uh, you know, uh, there's you some... manage people, you manage a lot of people, <laughs> right. you know, right. you're right. And so I wanted to bring this up because Lamar being unrepresented right at yeah. this point, you can say wh whatever it is about him going into Eric and that's how they negotiate. Like, I know that to be a fact, right? Uh, before the Ravens broke up with me, I knew that to be a fact that Lamar's mother, that that. Right. I have been told that has been way over portrayed that it really oh. is Lamar that is involved in this. Yeah, right? I've, heard, I've heard the other, but okay. Fair enough. So Lamar being unrepresented from the minute this injury happened 
the team and Chad Steele, who I don't even need to go through the integrity issues that I have with Chad Steele, right? Um, just on a straight integrity issue of what would he tell me the truth or would he lie to me? Right. Or is it right. his job to lie to me? Right? right. Or what is his job in his mind? Cause right. I, I don't even know what his job is, but I know what he thinks his job is. Right. So the fact that the team takes a stance that he's going to come back and play against the Falcons tells NFL network, this rich eyes in all of them are a little egg face. Cause they went on national TV and said, we're hearing Lamar's back, Stacey Dale, they're all there, Lamar's back. Lamar doesn't come back. Now the pressure's on, well, what's wrong with Lamar? Or are they lying to me? Well, it certainly felt like John Harbaugh felt like he was going to get him back. Is that pressure on the kid? The kid's not speaking. He's gone code silent on all of these media that he's never had any problems speaking on at any point, right? He can just open his phone and a million people will know whatever he's thinking, all right? And he goes unrepresented where a real agent would, A, have signed a deal for $134 million guaranteed a long time ago and said, dude, settle down. You'll get the two fifty. You get the, You earn that part. Like, like, fair enough. Or he'd have an agent saying, my guy's Deshaun Watson. I want $195 or I did, let's make it look like $232 so we can go to the media, which you control anyway. So whatever we tell the media is what it is, right? So all of this happens. And now from the beginning, he would have had insurance, which he may or may not have. Who knows, right? I don't right. know if he has $200 million worth of insurance. but yeah, that's pretty where, expensive insurance. Wherever that is, right? Right. He would have had a rep the minute his knee was screwed up saying – Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're getting a second opinion. Let's right. fly you down to see Dr. Andrews, Dr. You know, Doolittle, whomever, right? Then we would say, whoa, whoa, one to three weeks. Eric, what do you – John, stop. Chad, stop. Right. You know, our guy's – he's got a PCL thing here. He's whoa. out of contract. Like, he's not going to go out and play at 80% because he doesn't want that and you don't want that. And he can't win that way. And – Settle down. Now, behind closed doors, the agent's saying, hey, dude, don't go out there. We decided as a family to not do a deal. We got some insurance on you. Don't go out there and rip your knee up. Don't play. Don't play. They have no wide receivers. You can't right. beat Joe Burrow. You're not 100%. Wink, wink. You're not 100 Get back in the tub. Get back. Get, go get another massage. Not good enough. Sorry. Started. Didn't feel good till the end of January. Like, right. they're pissed. Let the agent be pissed at Eric and let them fight during the holidays, right? Not you, not your mother, not whatever, when you got right. a bad leg anyway. And have all of this conjecture because he goes code silent because he has no PR team. The only PR team he really has is Chad Steele, and that's on the other side. Right. That's more for right. him. Right. Right? You know? So – I'm just saying at this point, Billy, from a management standpoint, the lack of sophistication and teamwork and him having Jerry Maguire or Lee Steinberg in this case, who comes on the show all the time um, to say, let, let's have a strategy here for all of this and not let the team tell NFL Network and tell the media and, and get it out in the world that you're going to be able to play and then when you're not able to play they're going to use that against you and say oh you weren't ready at prime time when they knew you were hurt right like last year they and knew you don't think last you year. don't think that the nfl pa you know is talk, like talked about that and has talked about that and talks about that to all the players like i if he goes down and he's under a long-term contract it's really easy to say guys you just signed me to a long-term deal. Like, you need me to sit. I got to get better. Otherwise, I'm jeopardizing the rest of the contract that you just gave me. Like, to your point. The Ronnie Stanley method, which is he play when he's ready is, to play. And then yeah. Ronnie Stanley showed that he wanted to play, that he wanted to earn his money. He got back on the field, and right. lo and behold, he's mostly Ronnie Stanley, right? Yeah, I mean, everything, yeah. I mean, you, you I don't really need to add much to all of that. Like, when you make one decision, sort of there's a snowball effect. And, you know, the one thing that you knew was the worst thing was like, get hurt. 
you have major exposure. Well, it's not even just like the major injury that we, you know, like you break your leg and you're done. Okay. It's not even that it's even the little nagging injuries here that now it's a really hard decision. Do I go back out there this Sunday or whatever and play with the sort of ragtag bunch that we put together? Or, I mean, part of me wonders like how much of this is like Harbaugh subterfuge and like we're going to see almost an entirely new team come out this weekend because everyone oh, is I, I think anything. I think this kid can get out of the phone booth. I mean, that's why, <laughs> dude, I am not kicking dirt. I right. Go back. If they somehow win right. 30 to 28 on a last second Tucker 48 yard field goal to break everybody's hearts at 1115 on Sunday night. Right. I'm not saying they're not capable. Dude, sure. they went out the first 11 games and had double digit leads in every single game. Yeah, like, no, I like, get it. I mean, right. they're they're good enough in any right. given we haven't seen it in a long time. It certainly hasn't been practiced on the backfields. I don't think this has been a big ruse to say, Lamar, we're gonna park you in the in the garage and dust you off like a red barchetta on you know Sunday night and you're just gonna go out and do all of this and we're gonna we're gonna leave little stink bombs that your knee swollen we're gonna leave little stink bombs that you're lazy like like all of this stuff that's come out the last month our coach is gonna look bewildered at press conferences and gonna be speechless <laughs> right. about anything not like hey Lamar's really trying like I don't know Harbaugh has not in any way upsold this to any point to think like that things feel copacetic. It does not feel copacetic. It does well, not. Look, I mean, Dobbins rested. Calais Campbell, I think, is ready. I don't know where Marcus Peters is. Like, I, I still don't think there's any wide receivers, but I'm not sure that really matters. Because Roquan really Smith's all... looking like the guy in Fast Times at Richmond High. Right. I mean, we're just straight. <laughs> we're just straight running the ball and throwing it to Andrews. You know, I mean, like everybody knows what we're going to do, but uh, I, I don't know. You know, I mean, maybe the look every season, you know, is weird in its own way and unique in its own way. And the, Dude, they and, pop two you know, fumbles. They sack yeah. Burrow. Right. Like things right. happen. Right. You know, like right. I don't. Sure. I. Vegas only had him at six and a half to start with, which says to me Vegas fully believes Lamar Jackson's playing. Yes, they, right? it sure does. It sure and does. and it, it, but also that they're going to get beaten by a touchdown anyway, right? Like right. so that's right. that's kind of where Vegas has it. And I, I don't the coyness and paranoia of John Harbaugh throughout all of this. Like if you're sitting Lamar and saying, you know what? Lamar's going to be ready for the playoff game, but we're going to chill him out. He could have played two weeks ago. We we don't want him getting in there banged up against the Steelers. And they, did you see how cheap shoddy the Bengals game was? By the way, in red, like out on social media in the 48 hours after the game this week, both teams. I mean, Roquan Smith did some dirty stuff. Eli Apple did some dirty. I mean, just like there was just dirty stuff going on that I didn't really on television when I Pick watched couple, it yeah, feel like either. they're setting bad blood. Like. I've watched a lot of playoff hockey. You know what I mean? Like right. I've seen how that percolates. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, that that is that game was the perfect example where a coach comes into the locker room and puts the bounty up, right? Like, hey, practice squad guys. Like there's no bounties in the to, NFL. Sean Payton. I'm proved. just saying, like, we're gonna play these guys again next week. It sure wouldn't hurt us if, you know, a couple of them are, are so sore that they can't go next week. Dude, they like got they, after Burrow late in the game, and Burrow yeah. braced himself with his right arm. And yeah, I was, was like, was oh, my God. Stuff, like, get yeah. you, d yeah. dude, you know what I mean? What do you guys – this coin flip thing, you're taking this a little too seriously, I think. Right. You know what I mean? So right. Well, and you could look at the scoreboard and see Buffalo was seemingly in control. So, I mean, what are you really doing? Right. Well, a like, lot of teams pulled at halftime and did stuff like sure. that. Billy, I'll tell you what, man. We will talk about the state of the world and life <laughs> and business and commerce and roofing and Gordian Energy and all the good stuff you do, uh, as well as uh, helping us put our Rofo coffee in the cold roofing mug around here. But uh, uh, it's playoff week, man. I mean, get the purple flamingos out. You know, yep. dude, if they win, the city will become a purple tent city next week. You I agree. Know. I think it will only take this one and then it's on. And then, you know, I don't know if it goes any farther, but, but, you, it, you know, look, despite all of that, uh, our true nature, 
in Baltimore, Baltimore positive, the whole thing is that when it comes time to like go to battle, we we're going to bleed purple and and we're going to root for our team. So that's just how it goes. All right. Uh, kick off Sunday night. We got football all weekend. Uh, Bill, it's yeah. super wild card weekend. Uh, we got going on. Uh, we're going to have a super uh, Maryland Crab Cake Tour stop at TNA Coney Island Hot Dog. Uh, I'm going to have some Raven scratch-offs to give away, as well as some holiday cash drops. A few leftovers. John Martin tells me they're still good, so we're going to be giving them away on Thursday. i got some great guests joining us, including my pal Mike Shu uh, from WJZ. There's rumors that Tony De La Rose, because I'm in the White Marsh area, is going to stop by, and uh, we're going to put the family back together, uh, tell some old purple war stories of uh, jumping on the bar at the Avenue in White Marsh. Oh, those were some late nights back uh, last century. Uh, I am Nestor. We are WNST AM 1570. Towson, Baltimore. He never stopped talking. Baltimore. Positive.